a very good evening to you and thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and this is Power Talk. Now this evening we want to end period stigma. This is a conversation that in recent months has been held in so many spaces and tonight we want to understand what is the root of period stigma and how can we overcome this. And joining me in studio, I have Faith Ann Mwaura, who is a health specialist. Karibu sana. Thank you. Right next to her, we have Ian Zive, who is a journalist. Karibu, Ian. Asante sana. And finally, we have Janet Kaburu, who is a marketing specialist. Karibu, Janet. Thank you. So as you can see, we have a very mixed panel of ladies and gentlemen. And we want to tackle this conversation, understand the take of both genders on how we can end period stigma and how we overcome this demon that prevails in society. Now, I'd like to hear from you as well, so you can go on our social media platforms, which is at Y254. Go on our platforms, send us your opinion, write a question, share an experience that you've had where you have been stigmatized or you have misunderstood what periods are. So to kickstart the conversation, let us start from the grassroots, the conception of periods, how we started having periods. So Janet, can you tell us what was your very first experience of having your periods? Okay, uh, my first experience, I did not expect it, first of all. Uh, you know, most of the girls that are of my age started their periods when they were in primary school, class 8, class 7, but mine actually came late uh, when I was in uh, form 1, form 2. So it was, it was a bit stigma because people were always talking about their periods and then I not yet received my period. So for me, it's vice, vice versa. Mine were a bit late and some even come earlier. Ah, yes. And that's a very unique experience because yes. you expect to have your periods when you're in uh, maybe class 7, class yes. 8, 13, 12. Yes. That's when you start. Yeah. So when it comes later, there's the stigma of why haven't you started yet? Yes, yes. It does. That's, that's a very good perspective and we'll tackle that later on. Mm. Ian, let's get a gentleman's perspective. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Someone was asking right before we started, what is the relevance of a gentleman to this conversation? And we want to understand the role that men play. So what was your first experience with a friend or a lady having periods when you first heard about them or even understood the concept of what periods were? Um, Cheryl, thanks so much. I'm grateful to be here. But um, I think my first experience was when I was still in primary school, class eight to be exact, um, my desk mate got her periods. Um, you know, at that time, you still ha you are still at a tender age. You are freaking out all of a sudden. <laughs> you don't really understand this. But then there, f there was a class teacher of mine. She was female. She came, took her, but she never explained about it. So I think from that step, that I think that really bodes for misinformation from the male side. So I think I'm here maybe just to shed some light on maybe informing the male side of the male aspect, the male spectrum, because most of the times when the, we get activists, most of them are female, or all of them are female. We don't get me any collaboration from their male counterparts. So I think I'm here maybe just to widen the scope a little bit. And that's important. You've brought up a very interesting issue. First, that there was no information at all. There was no clarification of what happened. And secondly, the importance of male counterparts in this conversation because it's both male and female who deal with periods if we're being realistic. So we want to understand how men play a role in this conversation as well. So lastly, Faith Ann, were you informed? Did you have any idea of what periods were, what to expect before your first periods? I would say I was much, very much educated about menstruation and um, my first experience was actually very interesting because I was very happy. Um, having experiencing my first menstruation, I ran to the washrooms and um, when I, okay, I felt something weird and I just rushed there and then I saw, you know, some spots and I was very happy because then I'm now, I turned, was, I was, you know, feeling like I'm now turning to a lady, I'm now a grown woman. So I was 
I was very happy and I wouldn't say there was some sort of st stigma from how I've been raised and maybe how my teachers taught me and even at home my parents also used to like tell me if this happens is what you do and they used to always carry a pack of um, of my pads even without experiencing them so I was quite edu educated about it so I was very much enlightened about menstruation even before I began mine yeah Mm. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. And from the get-go, we can see that all our guests have very different experiences of their inception into periods. So, Faithan, since you were educated and you knew what to expect and you were prepared, did it not come as a surprise when it first started? It did. And um, not that much of a bad surprise. It was like... Now you know you're now something else, you know, a grown lady. Now this is how it, it was some sort of um, a nice experience for me. It didn't catch me by surprise, like, you know, boom, like you didn't know what this is. You've always been told about it. So I had some information about my menstruation. And um, I wouldn't say it was that much of a, a surprise to me or maybe something that I would say caught me off guard. I knew about it and I had heard about it and I was ready to experience You were ready it. Yeah. for your menses. Yeah. And that's really, really good because mm -hmm. most people are not prepared at all. Yeah. Or you can find that some cases where girls buy pads but they've never had their menses. Yeah. So every time when they're going to school, the parents will include that in the shopping list but they've not experienced this yet. Mm -hmm. Did you have a similar situation? Did you have a situation where your parents will just buy pads for you and you've never had your menses. Yes, yeah. Since my 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 periods were a bit delayed, I got them in form two. So I was like, girls were having their menses. I was just feeling odd and out. And sometimes I would, I would even wear the pads just to <laughs> to experience what they have been experiencing. So I'll I'll prepare myself. My parents would always make sure I carry the pads to school just in case it happens. Okay. Yes. And that's really really good. Mm. So in your cases you were ready in, in one way or another. Yes. Did you have a conversation with anyone about faith? And you probably had a conversation before your menses started. Yeah, yeah. Who gave you the talk? Was it your parent, a friend? Um, I would say it started off with my teacher in school. Yeah, we were taught, it was, I was in class seven. So we were taught all about the changes in menstruation and all that. So the first time I heard about it was from my teacher. But also at home, my, my elder sister used to like educate me and tell me this happens, this is how you place a pad on a pant, this is how you do it. all that. I was taught the hygiene of menstruation from um, a school level and also at home. Where um, I wouldn't say my parents, like my mom, but my elder sister took that chance and um, educated me and enlightened me on what happens and how you clean yourself, how you make sure you have an extra pad and everything else. So yeah, I was quite introduced to the journey earlier. Even so before. it it would help if you have an elder sister, yes. an elder cousin who's experienced it before you. Mm -hmm. And Ian, what would you say, or who would you say rather, is the person who's in charge of educating both male and female? Because we learn about sexual reproductive health, maybe in class six, who would you say should take the role of educating people on menses? Um, I think this is a societal problem. It doesn't really have to come down to the fact that I'm pointing out someone individually or as a group or as an organization that they are supposed to, you know, educate both male and female sex and also maybe even the children, teenagers, university students, and the entire society at large. But still, I feel like it is just within among ourselves, individually, you have to learn it, I have to learn it. Because let's face it, even if right now I'm a male, maybe one day I might still have a daughter, or maybe fathers out there have daughters. And you know, something with periods, it's not choosy. You might have it alone, you might have it with your mom, you might have it with your dad. Now, what if you have it with your dad? Would you, wouldn't you want him to be informed? I think that's where it all boils down. Each and every one of us should have adequate research. 
Mm. So it comes from the individual. You have to want to find out more information about it. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, Janet, coming back to you, you say that your periods came late. Yeah. And sometimes you would wear pads just to feel like yes, you're yes. very like much included. Like a normal woman. Yeah. yeah. So what is that? What, what is that that you want to feel like a normal woman? <laughs> Uh, you know, for me, I was in a girls' school, so that was normal. Uh, uh, every now and then, you'd see girls carry pad, but you even shy to tell them that you've not yet experienced your menstrual periods. So that would be a little stigma, and I, th I think it would be better if you're educated that you're still normal, even when you experience your periods a bit late. You don't have to experience them at an early age. So uh, it was a bit uh, intimidating, a, a little. Ah, yes. Because you, you may feel like you're different than the rest. Yes. And like even Faith Ann mentioned, getting your periods is like your initiation into womanhood. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you start feeling like, now I'm grown, now I'm maturing. It also comes with so many issues. If we're being real, periods comes with hormonal imbalance, you have all these cravings, you have all the mood swings. Ian, <laughs> let me bring it to the boy child. Because I know sometimes guys deal with maybe girlfriends and they have mood swings and you don't understand why she has these mood swings. How do you handle a girlfriend who has those, those <laughs> mood swings now and to maybe it's her periods? Um, maybe the best they can go for is offer emotional support. I don't think there's anything that you can do other than that emotional support. Yeah. But still... Because, you know, all this, as you said earlier, um, em the emotions are high, immunal imbalance, um, cravings. I think this, uh, this comes now to the male side as misogynistic because when we associate periods and women with those kinds of feelings, then you start hearing a little bit of horrible slurs at women, you know, maybe in disagreements. And that, I think, feels like it's somehow a cake considering we're in the 21st century right now. Yes. I like that you've brought up that point because as women, I think most of us can agree that you get into a situation where you're expressing yourself and the guy can say, are you on your periods? And dismiss it as, ah, uko too emotional because unanyesha. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with things like that, Faith Ann? Um, I wouldn't say I've experienced that much of mood swings as they say. Um, maybe with a guy, I mean, I have mood swings and all that, but not in the presence of a guy. But in some cases I've had, um, they tend to think that you're overreacting. A, maybe because you don't have your periods or maybe because you have them and you're acting off and now you, you start maybe argue, arguing, maybe having some issues over petty issues and all that. But I feel at times we exaggerate, like we are almost to the onset of our periods but you may be wanting to be you want to pass another message but you want to claim it's because of the menstruation that i'm experiencing so like there's some sort of yes we experience some most things and all that hormonal imbalance and everything else but there's an extent that people ladies fake and um i don't think it goes along with them understanding what we are experiencing because yes. one might exaggerate, the other one maybe, you know, him understanding like um, maybe he had a, a previous girlfriend who had similar, and then you meet another one who is extra. <laughs> she overreacts and everything else, and you're know, like, um, I want to blame the mood things to the cramps and everything else, to the menstruation, I mean, but we blame the wrong things to the wrong things. Yes. Yeah. So, and I feel like people take it as an insult mm -hmm. when you blame it on something. Even if I am on my menses, yeah. I am justified for my emotions and my actions. How do you deal with that, Janet? Let's say mm -hmm. you're expressing yourself in your workspace and a male counterpart, because I understand uh, with the marketing field, there are a lot of male people who dominate the field. How can you deal with someone saying, ah, ako emotional because ananyesha? How do you deal with, or have you even encountered situations like that? 
Uh, yes, especially in my workplace where we, are, we have most male people, they don't understand that. Today you've just entered the room, you don't feel like greeting anyone. <laughs> they don't understand. So you need to at least tell them I'm on my period so that they can have a valid reason why you're acting the way you're acting. So for me, I, ha I don't have a problem telling my colleague, Yo, I'm on my period, so please don't disturb me. If I sleep, um, just let me sleep. And uh, I'm lucky enough to get men who appreciate and they do, don't take things, do th those things for granted. So they'll just give me my space if I need. And I think it should be, uh, if someone is in a period, they should be feel comfortable to share that they are on, your, on their periods with, yeah, with different people. Yes, yes, I agree with you because most of the time when you're on your period, you're very sensitive and you don't want to do too much. You just yes. want to... Let's get the, the day done and go back home. Yeah. So, Ian, do you think it's important to have these open conversations with your colleagues and your friends about maybe the struggles they have during their periods, if they have the hormonal imbalance and the cravings? Do you think people should have these conversations? Um, yes, because this all boils down not to understanding each other because we can't keep these subjects behind closed doors for long because we've kept it for centuries and still we're still keeping it in behind closed doors in the 21st century 2023 maybe i feel like this is the time that we just you know air it all out just let whatever come let it come because this is a subject that has been long overdue we've had even days dedicated to subjects such as this we've had other panels discuss them and i feel like us as the youth in general really need now to also let our voices be heard on matters such as this. Yes, I like that. That is very well said. And I want to give an example of something that was very unfortunate because of the lack of education about periods and menses. There was a girl some few years back, she committed suicide because she was stigmatized based on just her being on her period. And she was very young. She was in maybe class six, class seven. So, Faith Anne, given that you had awareness before that, would you say it was maybe your role to give other girls the same awareness in the same settings? Because not everyone has the same exposure. Is it the role of people who have the awareness to share this information with others? Um, I had him say it is a personal responsibility and I understand and support that because the stigma doesn't stop it. Actually, we don't, we're not supposed to like say men bring the stigma. Because when I was in high school, um, there was this experience I had. Someone would have a leakage of the <coughs> lenses, and the clothes we used to wear were quite clear. Mm. So you would note if someone has. And you get to hear some conversations from other chicks, and they're like, um, like the stigma is everywhere with ladies ourselves, with men and everyone else, but it's a personal responsibility. I've, I've learned about it. I know this is, what, that this is what happens for men. Like men know this is what happens. And for ladies, we know this is what happens. Don't criticize someone because you've seen them messed up and um, tend to like think they're not even responsible themselves. The people who have high heavy flows the people who have light flows and all that. And the fact that I just licked my skirt doesn't mean I'm not responsible. I'm not because I'm not even taught about menstruation and all that. It's a personal responsibility. Mm. You know, for men, they know we are experiencing this. Get to know, like, this is something normal and it's healthy for the girl child. So they are supposed to, like, learn and um, get to live with it. Just allow yourself to be in a position to, you're not compromising with it, you're living with it because it will never stop and this is what we have. Mm. For the ladies, I feel we are too much of judge, judge, judgmental people and um, that should stop. We are more, yeah. we keep saying that men criticize us and stigmatize us for maybe leaking and not being responsible with um, our menstrual claim, that's the hygiene. But for the ladies as well, we're supposed to take that. Like she messed up, go cover her up, tell her this is what happens if she doesn't know. Just educate her as though you don't know. 
like your younger sister, your elder sister, and yeah. it doesn't happen because I want it to happen. Maybe it's just an accident. Yes. And, yeah. So it's someone's responsibility. Just be in a position to allow yourself to learn about it and live with it because it's healthy. Yes, yeah. it's natural, it's healthy, and it's beautiful even. It's a very beautiful experience because yes. it leads to motherhood and all these other things. So you've brought about the aspect of women stigmatizing fellow women. Yes. And we see this a lot. Even in your case, Janet, women would, or your fellow girls will be like, oh, you've not started your periods yes. yet. What's wrong with you? How can we change that? Or how can you address someone who is doing that actively to someone else? What will you tell them to do that's different? Because we want to empower our fellow women. Okay. First of all, I think uh, as fellow women, especially as mothers, we should feel comfortable speaking to our young kids at an early age because coming from a uh, family that we come from, our parents don't feel comfortable talking about things like periods. They just assume maybe the teacher will educate you and all. So I think it should start at home. Each parent should take the responsibility to educate her child or the dad. You know, they are even single dads. They should also know about that so that they can also educate their girls so that whenever I get the periods, I will not feel afraid of who I'll turn to. Maybe I, um, um, I only have a dad. I like, I'll... I I'll know um, I can always count on my dad to talk about these things. So I think everyone should take this responsibility to know about periods and to talk about it freely so that it cannot be awkward anymore. Yes. yes. And you've brought a very important aspect of the family starting at home. Yes. The parents should have these conversations with their children, yeah. their grandkids, you, all these people. It needs to be a conversation that is held. And in African traditional societies, this is not things that people will talk about. Your mom will not sit you down and start saying, this is how you wear a pad, yes. this is what happens. And that's probably the root cause of the issue. Mm. If you cannot have the open conversation with your mom and your aunties, then who can you freely talk to? Mm. And let me bring about the aspect of people who have complicated periods, because they're people, all, all periods vary, and they're irregular, some are regular, some are more painful, than others. Um, let me ask you, Ian, I don't know if you have sisters. Do you have any sisters? No. Okay, so let's, let's maybe focus on your friends and your girlfriends. Have you ever experienced a situation where someone was having bad cramps? Because I'm sure you've heard about cramping and people assume it's just this pain that is there. They don't truly understand it, especially men. Have you had a situation where someone was telling you they have very bad cramps that they don't even think they can function? Mm -hmm. And what was your experience? What was your first thought of even something like that? What did you think about what are these cramps? You know, at first, in, a lame, in layman's terms, this goes down, you know, maybe it's just a stomachache. So the first thing I'll do, I'll get you Panadol. Water, <laughs> warm water, salty water. Yeah, mm. but I think... Sometimes just let someone be, just let them rest. Or maybe if it goes if it goes a little bit farther than that, maybe now this really needs this turns into a serious emergency case. Because let's face it, it's a biological thing that is happening in someone's body. And if this and they, if there are complications to it, then this needs a hospital. You need to see a doctor. And that's, I like the way you've even brought in the aspect of salt water. <laughs> Most guys take it as that. And that's why we've seen this challenge of uh, stimulating period pain in guys so that they can experience what women experience. Mm -hmm. Faith, yeah. since you have a, a bit of a background in health, do you, and, uh, do you think people understand the complications that may be rooted in all this pain and all these irregularities in periods. Do you think people truly understand what could be causing all that? Um, yeah, they have, because they learned biology for most of them in high school. And um, there's hormonal imbalance and there's the contraction of the pelvic and all that. So they know when you're having your menses, there's that process in your know, uterus and everything else. So they learn and know that, they know, they learn. And know that there is a process that goes on 
and they need to like understand it's not cause um it just happens it's a health thing and um it's my man, it's mm. my month for me to like shed off my eggs and everything else so mm. at the end of the day i have to let the egg out if i'm not going to get pregnant so yeah most of the people have and know the complications but not the exact ones they know the about the cramps and everything else but some people don't know how about some uh, other disorders that come along with menstruation so like for example would say um the people bleeding heavily is a disorder lightly is also a disorder the people who ex experience some um, extreme some severe cramps that's also a disorder like people don't know but they just assume maybe because i'm experiencing it's because i have cramps this all happens but there are also some other diseases like endometriosis where you have some inflammation in your uterus and everything else people don't know they yes. need to learn and know this is what happens i might have this disorder and um, it could be the reason i'm having heavy extreme pain when i'm having my periods or maybe when we are having sex because it also occurs when yes. you're having some ingrowth it happens it occurs that you tend to like have pain when urinating when having sex and everything else so yeah people don't know and they need to like get educated about mm. them yeah and you've also highlighted on the maybe the value of having a specialist yeah. who is in charge of your reproductive health yes. as a woman as a lady uh janet let me let me ask you how long did it take you to figure out your cycle how long did you know like it happens after four weeks on this date this is what happens it lasts for how long how long did it take you to to have all that down uh for me it took around seven months uh to figure out my cycle because sometime it would come after maybe three weeks, three and a half weeks. So I needed to know that uh, you need to take some foods. <coughs> there are some foods that, uh, that promote hormonal balance. So uh, six months. Six um, months, yeah. And depending on this conversation where it's heading, because even understanding the foods that you need, the yeah. diet that you should follow, yeah. all those things play a very important role in your flow. Yeah, no. Umeskia, it took her six months to figure out her menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. So have you had an instance where you were with a girl and she had her period and she was not prepared? And maybe you were in a situation where you had to go and buy the pads. Um, I have not been in such a situation. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> have any of you experienced yes. yes. faith? Yes. I, I don't know. I felt so happy because it happened. Because this day, I didn't know I was having, like, my periods were almost. So it just happened, I had a leak, and there was a guy next to me. And um, he, he's my friend. So he noticed. And I can you, Lisa, are you having your periods? And I'm like, I just checked, and then I panicked. And then I'm like, no, because we are the two of us, one of us. You know, I have to go take a shower because I can't just go for the pad. And uh, he told me, just go take the shower and uh, I'll just go for the pad. It was a good feeling because, yo, how many men will do that? I know. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you feel like they're genuine with you, yes. right? Yeah. Did he get the right pads? Um, yeah, I had to tell him the, <laughs> what I want and that is what he got and brought it and I was so appreciative because if I were alone maybe I could have just showered and I don't know you know you can't go out yeah yes, without a pardon truly. Yeah. so it was sort of he saved me and um, it's also I also felt that he took it as, as his own responsibility because at, at that time I can't help myself but he's here and he understands that this is normal and it happens. So yeah, I was very happy about it. And that's people a very should good embrace experience. that actually. Yeah. Yeah. So Ian, when you your situation, do you think you would have gotten the right paths? I would, because at the end of the day you are human after all. Because <laughs> you, you can't just leave someone hanging. It's someone you know. 
let alone even being an acquaintance or a friend it's just someone you know yes. someone you need at that particular time that particular moment you're the one who's near them at that particular time that particular moment that is maybe what we call fate for <laughs> us. but in it short i will i will yes and i feel like this is a challenge people should do yeah taking the men to a supermarket and asking them to pick pads. I feel like all of us need to do that challenge yes. and see if mm. they'll pick the right ones or come out a bahatisha too hapo. And we all know there are also different kinds of pads and with different absorption, length and whatnot. Yeah. When you go shopping, Janet, Maria Kwanza ukenda shopping kununua hivi pads. Ama did you just buy the first thing that you saw? Uh, so for me, uh, I just went with the first thing that I saw. And then remember I was in I was in high school, so I didn't have I didn't have the specific the enough amount. So I used my first packet. So I, I would just carry my first packet and then so I had to borrow another pad from someone else. So there's the one who has heavy flow and then light flow. So uh, I didn't exactly know the exact part that I'm supposed to do. But now, part. after some time, that's when you figured I out figured what out, works yes. for you. Yes. Okay. And Ian, do you even know, aside from pads, what ladies use for their periods? Do you know any other alternative? Um, I've heard of reusable pads being manufactured, not even manufactured, being made by people in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Also, activists and other NGOs have also brought that model into most ASAL counties in Kenya, Trukana, also even the western counties, because statistics show the western counties, when a girl is on their periods, things tend to get messy. They have to pay for pads using sexual favors. You know, this is a topic that we, we really need to expound on. That is true. There's a lot to it. And you brought up the, the aspect of even people who cannot access pads every single time, so they may need to rely on reusable pads. So do you think it's an important initiative that they're doing? Yes, it is. Because, let's face it, in Kenya, most of the population is living below the poverty line. And maybe we can call it privilege that girls here in the capital are well educated on such matters but think about a girl in Trukana right now think about a girl in Garissa these are areas that have a higher illiterate percentage so activists and NGOs I think we see why they concentrate on such counties such areas so much hmm. that's really really good and Faithan and, since yeah. I want to see before you before you add on his point okay. let me let me ask another question so you can tie it together Given that you had the information based on your elder sister's experience, did she also tell you about other alternatives like tampons or menstrual cups that you can use or did she t just tell you about pads? I'll be honest, no. At that time, I only knew of pads. Um, concerning the tampons and the menstrual cups, I was juicy after learning them. And I guess it's because they are expensive and all that, but... I don't blame them, it's because, you know, you can't afford that, so you have to. Tampons are expensive, really. Yes. Yeah. A cup, I don't know, I've never used it. So, but I feel there was need for them to introduce a pad before that, because that is what we could afford. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now that we're talking about even the expenses of tampons, mm -hmm. products for menstruation are expensive. Mm -hmm. Pads are expensive, the tampons are expensive. You can have a menstrual cup maybe that is reusable, but that's also expensive and the, the usage of it, not everyone is aware of that. How do you think maybe we can help? Janet, what would be your suggestion of how we can subsidize maybe this menstrual products to make them accessible to everyone? Uh, for me, I think uh, right now the pad is around 120 from 50 bob so it means that uh, the, it's already not affordable to most most people because if basic hunger is not affordable what about things like but that people don't recognize as much so i think uh as kenyans we should embrace producing locally made made pads uh to to increase the availability and then reduce price mm. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, because most of, the, most of the parts right now, they are imported. So the tax rate is high, hence the price going up. Mm. Yes. And most people, as you said, obviously, kama unga ina kushinda kununua, mm. will you really prioritize on buying mm. pads? No. You're going to dismiss that. Yes. And that's where, Ian, you brought up the issue of uh, the NGOs and whatnot offering aids to people, especially in low-income societies. Do you think there should be an initiative or what would you even propose to help these societies? Um. As far as databases are concerned, NGOs are doing a particularly good job, but then comes the state. Has the state really even considered on wavering taxes on menstrual products? Because even in budgets, the women rep in counties are always mandated, you know, to take care of girls when such issues arise. Also, plus maybe because most men are in high political offices, offices of power is it maybe because all this is not being prioritized suppose maybe a senator for example we also what nominated senator gloria roba did mm. she was kicked out of parliament but then what did it incite really it incited you know a sense of awareness in people this jump started something something of a movement something of a cultural phenomenon and maybe i feel like this does not only lie squarely on the ngo's shoulders but maybe on the state, elected members, even members of high society, even us, us, you know, even the youth can even, you know, collect money, even decide, you know, we can go visit a particular children's home because maybe they cannot afford this and whatnot. We can donate this to prisons. Yeah, because it's a wide scope and I think this is a really broad subject. And you've, you've given a very clear example of how people can help it starts with us again it goes back to us as individuals figuring out who needs the help and how we can offer the help and the example that you gave was a very clear depiction of what happens in kenya she was kicked out of parliament because of the stain and that is a conversation that needs to be had because you can have your periods anywhere you can be in the middle of a meeting in a matatu, on the road, and they start. So this is something that needs to be accepted and acknowledged. And how do you think faith and the, the cultural norms of Africa or Kenyans have played a role in us remaining quiet about this conversation? Um, I guess it's because um, we, we are learned, we are um, told that if you're having your menstruation that you're not supposed to like expose yourself. Like there's that that story of um, there's a certain culture that if you're having your menses, you're not supposed to be in the middle of men. You're not supposed to serve your dad food or anything because you you're unclean. As well as I've heard of others saying that you're not supposed to go to church because you're not clean. You're having your there were such stories. So I guess that was then. But right now, people are embracing it and they're just making us learn that we can live with this. This is what we have. It's not supposed to be told. We're not supposed to be, like, we're not supposed to give some other stigmas and also some bad norms about it. Mm -hmm. It's something that you're supposed to embrace and live with it. So, yeah, there are norms and other things, but we are living with them. And that is what we're supposed to be doing because at the end of the day, we are ladies. That is what ladies do. That is how we explain. It's biologically, that's yeah. us. That's what we're experiencing. And we should be more educated and learn that yes. this is what happens. This is, what, this is how you're supposed to like, take care of yourself and everything else. But the stigma is still there. No matter how much you're going to educate people, they're going to still stigmatize us because mm. some lack the knowledge. Maybe the way we are creating awareness is not bold enough to reach to other people. Yeah. So yeah, I feel we need to make people learn, create awareness and also by those campaigns maybe and giving out parts and everything else and also educate the young ones who are just growing up and make them understand this happens and this is how you're supposed to handle it. Yeah. yeah. And that's also rooted in religion to some extent because there was an aspect of the Bible saying that when you're unclean, you're not supposed to 
step in the tent of the Lord and do this and do that. Janet, do you think that is still something that stays in the minds of maybe older generations and is affecting younger generations today? Uh, yes, I think uh, as long as it's in religion, in, in our cultures, we're not supposed to handle certain, certain things. You're not, not even supposed to go to church. So it's still an issue which, you, which should be taught, people should eliminate each other. And then um, educate one another that, it should, that, that, sh that should not be an issue when going to church. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also there's the aspect of when we talk about cultural backgrounds and all these beliefs, there's the belief of when you've got a new period, you're a woman, therefore you should be married. And that's why we have uh, some communities such as the Maasai and maybe the, the Samburu who will give a woman or a child rather to marriage because she has started her periods. Ian, do you think as a man, would you support this ideology that once you've got a new period, now you're a woman, go get married, go have children? Um, no, because most girls tend to get their periods when they are 13, maybe even 15. And I feel like this poses a really, a really grievous health risk because if you try to conceive with a kid who's, who's barely even 17, you risk, you are at a risk of them getting obstetric fibrosis. Now that will really complicate matters even in future when they want to have kids. I feel like we are, we should not really put that weight on our kids. We shouldn't put that weight on the girl child because let's face it, just like the males, they also have to complete their education. They also have dreams. Let's not limit them just due to biological factors in their lives that, you know, you were created for this. This is your place in society, nothing else for you. And I'd really like to say there's a book titled Blossoms of the Savannah in high school. I, th I did it in high school. Mm -hmm. I feel like this book really illuminated this, what we are actually talking about right now. It really illuminated it because girls there had dreams. They needed to go to university. They needed to finish. They had big dreams for their careers, but some factors really held them back. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's not right at all. Yes, there needs to be a change of that mentality. And you've also, you've taken us back to the part of the conversation where I wanted us to talk about uh, the specialists, gynecologists, having even therapists and reproductive health doctors who can help you through understanding your body and your biology. Faith Ann, would you say it's important for ladies to have gynecologists? Yeah, it's important. Like from a tender age like maybe the people who get their periods at the age of nine there was such a case at nine a lady received her got her periods and i feel you need to learn more about your reproductive health at a tender age maybe from 15 or maybe before or after you begin your period so there's need for them to learn more about their health and maybe seek for more advices more checkups from the gainers and all that there's need be yeah, yeah. Mm. and also we we should understand that health is an investment yes and you have to prioritize your health mm -hmm. janet would you say or brother what would you how would you recommend people to find resources on the gynecologist and reproductive health specialists and even understanding how to take care of yourself during your menstrual period how can you advise people to get access to this information uh, first of all, I think uh, that should be an important topic which is covered in all schools. And she, she had said that their teacher told them how to put on pads and all that. It's not in all school. Maybe, were you in a private school? No. Okay. <laughs> because she was by, fortunate. By you are, you yeah. are lucky because mm. not all schools that are taught how to put on a pad, some things you just figure out. They just assume maybe you will know, you'll ask your friends. And I think this is an important matter. People should not assume. And then they also need to, to have like a nurse in a high school or in a private uh, primary setup so that if, you, if you're having your periods, you can see a nurse. If your symptoms are severe, you can rush to someone for assistance. Yes. yes. Mm, and that's very helpful. And as, as she's just said, Faithan was lucky because mm. most ladies do not have access to this information. Yeah. I personally, I think I, I found out through my peers. Yeah. They're like, this is how you wear a pad. And life went on. Yes. Um, uh, 
Ian, would you say you have information because this goes in line with the uh, sexual reproduction and the whole system? If you have a girlfriend and she tells you she has a yeast infection or a UTI, do you understand what that is? <laughs> um, I think people, I think most of us understand it. We just decide to be ignorant about it. Okay, do you have, would you agree, the ladies, do you think <laughs> men understand this? I like that they're both shaking their heads because <laughs> I also don't think they men don't. understand. <laughs> men do not truly, truly understand the same things because their reproductive system is different. And what would you say, Janet, how can we educate our boy child on, if your girlfriend tells you she has a UTI or a yeast infection, it is not an STI. How, how would you recommend we educate them? Uh, first of all, I think this topic should not be, uh, it was a good idea to include him, it should not be a ladies only talk so that they can be included and that uh, when you're talking about menstruation, when you're talking about UTI, they feel involved at an early age. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And that's really good. From a very early age, they should have the understanding. Yes. Faithan, have you had an experience where you told a gentleman, maybe you didn't even mean to, maybe he was your boyfriend and it just happened, and you told him, oh, I have a UTI, and he completely misunderstand, misunderstood you? Nah. You've not I've experienced that. that? Yeah. Not even a friend who's told your story? No, I guess there's, you see, um, people confuse. UTI and STIs and yeast infection because the symptoms are kind of similar. Yes. And the moment you start like saying, um, I'm experiencing this, my fluid is changing color and all that, I have irritation and everything else. It's sort of a shameful talk, giving it to maybe your boyfriend or maybe a friend because you start thinking, ah, oh, she has gonorrhea, she has, you know, they start <laughs> assumptions. Yes. So, I've never experienced such a such an incident, and um, yeah. but I know that they misunderstand and they mistaken some yes some disorders to some STIs and all that. Mm. And there needs to be education on what these are and the difference between that and the STIs. Janet, have you had an experience where you probably had an infection and you did not understand? what it was at the very beginning and you thought you you probably misunderstood and you thought you had an sti have you experienced that uh, yes i have as she said these are kind of shameful to talk about utis so you'll just hide maybe google since symptoms <laughs> <laughs> and then when you google then you'll see that you have an sti so i think it's better when everything should be open people should it should be encouraged to be taught in schools Yes, and also oh, my experience of my experience of having a new a new tea, I was very uh, traumatized. I actually thought I had an STI. You know, UTIs. As ladies, we get UTIs. It's easy. Yes. And I remember there's a time I blamed someone. <laughs> <laughs> I blamed someone of giving me a UTI, but I realized hey, it's not actually. Uh, sexually transmitted or as such you can get it from your toilet hygiene yes. and all that yeah so key thing educate people about all these things yes, yes. and as you've said even the ladies we ourselves have the misconceptions mm. yeah. because when you first experience it you wonder what's going on am i dying <laughs> and you don't even know who to talk to because yes. you can't tell your mom you're afraid you can't tell your friends you're like how do i start this conversation and let me also bring about the aspect of um, period symptoms and uh, pregnancy symptoms being very, very similar. Yeah. And I know most ladies have usually had like pregnancy scares. Faithan, have you had an instance where you were convinced that you were pregnant <laughs> and it was just your periods that were coming? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe I would say missing, a, okay, they tend to be regular at times or maybe you tend to have different symptoms maybe you start puking and all that you know shaded and everything it's the cramps but you're not sure you know it could be pregnancy it could be the the menstruation or something but i would i would say i do not have so i i have not experienced that much of different symptoms when mm -hmm. i'm having my period and, and maybe mistaken it to pregnancy but I know of a friend who did and actually she missed her period then and she was like very sure I'm pregnant mm. you know 
So I've I've not experienced it personally, but I know people who mistaken the nausea and the vomiting and all that to pregnancy. So yeah, there are people who experience such things. Yeah. yeah. And Janet, have you had a friend who had irregular periods? So you yourself, you had irregular periods and you were convinced that you were pregnant. You were like, I don't know, I'm a virgin, but I know by some immaculate conception this has happened. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, most of us don't take these period things seriously if you were not taught at an early age that they are that important. So maybe you lack track, you don't track your periods, and then maybe you assume they have delayed, or you don't track your. As I said, I took it took me six months to figure out my patterns. So there's a time I freaked out. I actually thought I was pregnant, and then later after a week, then you get your periods. So it's important people should get knowledge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They should know their apps attract these periods and all that mm. yes okay that's that's very good you need to at least have some idea of what your flow is like yes. and what to expect because after some time you understand your flow and i also want to to bring in the aspect of uh, contraceptions because this also affects periods and most ladies are recommended to do that because if you're sexually active and you're not planning on having kids then it's better to be prepared before. So, Faithan, would you recommend ladies who get contraception, because I know it also affects their men menstrual cycles, would you advise them to understand what they're getting into before? Or, enda tu utumia nye beshita kwa mitumia? No, I guess that's where we come back to the gyna. You should go to a gyna before, or a, maybe a health specialist, and get to learn which type of a contra contraceptive am I supposed to use? Because I'm not supposed to like assume because this one is going to work for me. The people use it and uh, get pregnant along the way because maybe it didn't work for your body. But um, as you said, contraceptives affect our menstruation. And I wouldn't say it's all contraceptives because others will miss or maybe have irregular ones because they've used P2s consistently. So that could also cause the reason you're having regular periods and all that. But just consult before you start using any sort of contraceptive. Yes. Yeah. It's important to have a professional opinion mm -hmm. before you make a decision because that's something that you're committing to for yeah. a few years maybe. Ian, will you go with your girlfriend to her gynecologist? Okay, Mulizane, what's happening? What do we need to do? What contraceptive do we need to use? Would you do that? Yeah, because I'm single. So, Nenda to do when a girlfriend. Yeah, but I feel like this is something that a couple needs to do mm. as a unit, not just give money or not even give money, just say, Wenda. <laughs> I feel like this is something that really affects the both of you and this is something that should really should really be put to light because you know complications happen and if they happen and you are not aware then sometimes things don't really work out you might be heading to the hospital next time so I think this is something that a man and a woman, or a girl and a boy, should actually go and yes. check it out. Yes. So it's it's important to involve the male and the female counterpart. Let's say, especially when you're in a relationship or when you're married, even you should be there for your woman and understand how does her menstrual cycle affect her and what can we do to even help her through the the journey, right? So now I want to wind up this show and we can get some final comments. I don't know if we have any comments from our social media pages. Okay, so we can start with Janet. We can start with you. Just give us some final parting shot mm -hmm. for the ladies who are experiencing maybe complications and people who are still continuing this prog the, the period stigma and shaming people about them. What can you tell people today as your parting shot? Um, I think people should, uh, uh, should really take this thing seriously and then not sideline it and think it's just a normal, another thing that happens. And then people should get eliminated on when you're supposed to get your periods, how, what's your pattern, are you, 
uh, are you experiencing is are you experiencing the right flow are you having complications so i think people sh we should really invest in education educating people having open talks like this should be normalized yes yes thank you so much for that education is the priority here understand what periods are so ian let's get your parting shots to the gentlemen who are watching Tell them what their role is in this conversation and what they can do in future to help the girl child. Um, I feel like this is not a girl's only topic. This also involves the male contingent in society. And I also feel like most of the gents out there have sisters, have, have kids, daughters more so. There are also single dads out there. I feel like this, this kind of conversation should actually be normalized so that you know we can get to educate one another let's just not share away from it and say oh umekuja ah you go to your mom she knows how to sort it out or maybe even i saw a story one day that even a single a, a dad was just chilling watching a football match magazine in hand then his daughter comes up springs up to him and says dad i'm hot and the, his daughter even tries to pull her dress up and his dad her dad says no 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 you wait, you wait. They walk out, they meet a pastor. The pastor <laughs> tries to exorcise a so-called demon out of the daughter, but it doesn't work, so they take her to a hospital. When she gets to hospital, the dad calls the mom, says, something has happened to her daughter, rush here very fast. Their mom comes, enters the room, speaks to the doctor, speaks to the child, and then they leave. I think that part of they leave, now that should be an ex because before they leave, the man should have also walked in. They should have spoke to their doctor as parents and not the man just, you know, waiting outside. And once they leave, no, it's like he hands over an official problem, a family problem. Yes. No, that's your problem. Take care of it. I feel like we should actually scrap that notion off. We should scrap it from society all in all. And maybe I'd also like to give... Um, a vote of thanks to the NGOs, the activists, even the state in its own way in supporting this. I would also like to give a special thanks yes. to, glad to, was it Senator Gloria Ruoba? Yes. Yeah, yes. she really did something that, you know, opened our minds. Before then, none of us were talking about this subject, but then that she walks true. in. It was a trending topic for a whole week. So I feel and like... And now it, we are having this conversation. Yeah, it shouldn't even be for a whole week. It should be like... A lifetime. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Ian. I'm really sorry to cut you short, but time is not on our side. But men should be part of the conversation. Yeah. Faith Ann, what's your parting shot this evening? Um, I feel we all need to educate ourselves and get to learn more about ourselves, our health, especially our sexual reproductive health. Get to learn more about what happens to a lady and uh, a male. You know, there are lots of things that you don't know. Learn about hygiene, take care of yourselves and all that. Other than stigma, just know it's a personal responsibility. I need to be there for myself. I don't want to be judged because I've leaked, because of all that. I don't want the whole drama. It all starts with me. Take a personal responsibility. Be there for yourself. Buy yourself parts and everything else. Go to a gaina, get screened for all sorts of cancers in, that are, you know, reproductive. Get to learn more about yourself. Get yes. to learn more about the other gender. What happens? This is what happens. Get to understand and live with it. Because we cannot be judging each other for things that naturally happen to us. Yes. So, yeah. so if you've gotten anything from this conversation, it's educate yourself. Educate yourself about this period and understand how you can even deal with them better. So now I want to read our parting shot this evening and it says menstruation has been shamed, silence and been taboo for far too long now. But every time a young person talks about it, we get a little closer to having open conversation. The world becomes better and a safer place for menstruators, I believe. Yes. And that is our parting shot this evening. I believe you've gotten something from this conversation. Both men and women need to have these conversations because they're both affected by menstruation. 
understand your reproductive health, understand your sexual health, and improve your daily life and your daily interactions. Be there for your sisters and brothers. Be there for your girlfriends, your friends, your, your sisters, and everyone so that we can end period shame. That is it for tonight, and thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Cheryl Blessing, and this has been Power Talk Show. Thank you.